Meyer brand grills up the value you expect with quality you can taste in every bite. Try our new quarter pound beef franks, cradled in our own hot dog buns and topped with tangy, no sugar added ketchup or easy squeeze whipped salad dressing. Top your burger with our convenient burger shaped Colby cheese slices. And don't forget the sides, like party size ripple potato chips, perfect for scooping, and our own special recipe cool and creamy macaroni salad. Stop into Meyer and discover big taste and bigger savings on Meyer brand. Discount Tire has just made tire shopping easier. Their touchless experience allows you to buy tires and book your appointment online. Then when you drive in, you can stay safely inside your car as the tires are installed. Discount Tire. Let's get you taken care of. The following podcast is not affiliated with the developers who have created the games being reviewed. The reviews are solely the opinions of the hosts to be used to make an educated decision on what games to download and play. Hello gamers and welcome to Budget Arcade, a free-to-play gaming podcast to help you navigate through the growing realm of free-to-play games. I'm Scott. My name's Jeff. Hello, I'm Mark. Hey, 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 it's Carrington from Real Dudes Podcast. And welcome to episode number 62. Just to recap, we play a free-to-play game every other week and then we rate and review it. Mark, what was this week's game? So this week we played Fantasy Star Online 2. It was developed by Sega. It is a MMO... RPG, but I'd more classify it as a action RPG than an MMO with blended of both. It was released in Japan in 2012 on the PC, and then here in the United States, it was released just last week uh, on the Xbox and the PC, and then throughout the eight eight year gap on every console over in Japan. This is kind of like a, the same type of issue where we had with uh, Dragalia Lost, was it? That it was like dropped in Japan like years before the, the game was dropped in the U.S. You remember, Jeff? Was that the game that they uh, I wasn't on the Dragalia gap? Lost episode. That was TJ. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. It was not Dragalia Lost. It was, um, oh, the, the what's the dragon name? Uh, dragon Quest. That was the one. Dragon Quest oh, of the Stars, game. wasn't that? Yeah, that they had that big gap where they had released it in Japan, and then they should after have just so left long, it in Japan. <laughs> Please, they should have left this one uh. in Japan too. So. so, let's let's get let's get through this together as a group, <laughs> as a team of people. We can make it through <laughs> this game. Yeah, gameplay. Um, so Fantasy Star Online Two. I did not realize it was so dated, like it came out so much earlier, but that makes a lot of sense. It is a third-person view. You can do some over-the-shoulder stuff. Um, Largely, at least the class I picked was melee-based with some spell casting. And uh, the menu at the bottom outlines kind of, at least on console, it felt like a PC UI to me. Because it had all these spots on the bottom where I could imagine you hitting the one or the two or, you know, hitting a number key to cast or something like that. And this, you had to use your shoulder buttons to tab to the spell you wanted. The inverted setting is here, unlike Skyforge. However, it is buried. It took me a little bit to find it. But I, as far as gameplay goes, I think Carrington uh, should should let us know about the gameplay here <laughs> so I, I will say really quick i've been playing fantasy star online for years i played the original one on gamecube so a not lot the original of the, not the original not like back on sega genesis the, or dreamcast like i'm saying dreamcast oh, the yeah, dreamcast yeah. one okay that's what you yeah. meant gotcha no 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 <laughs> um no i got it on gamecube um it's essentially the same yeah. game anyway i just semantics um, i've been playing oh you're fine uh, i have been playing on and off for the past eight years on pc just because 
I just love this franchise. So, I mean, essentially, your character goes on missions, and most of the missions that you are that you go on, it's basically just to kill a creature, get to the end, kill a creature, very monster hunter esque, and that's like very bare bones basic explanation. As you mentioned, Jeff, like it, it gets there. I mean. There's menus upon menus right. upon menus upon menus upon menus with this game. And I, I think had you to missed write the menu. It on a, I may have missed the menu. <laughs> I had to write everything down for this uh, recording. Thank you guys for having me, by the way. Because there are so many things buried uh, that the game... It does teach you, but even then, it's, it is it is kind of disjointed of how the tutorials give things out to you. It wasn't uh, very with this good game. at teaching you, that's for sure. Yeah, that opening tutorial, I mean, it's super short and sweet. It's like, hey, here's how you attack, and here are the different attacks you have, and have fun. Yeah, they don't... What the game doesn't. They don't go... Yeah, what the game... They don't tell you, oh, here's how you, uh, you know, put out your skills and where to put your skill points. Nope, the, here's a quest that's buried... After you do so many other quests, oh, and you can put skill points into different areas to make your build for your character, but but you know they don't bother to tell you that until like further in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's missions that NPCs give you called client orders, and those are very specific. The there's a character called Athen in the main lobby area. He teaches you probably eighty percent of the game that you need to basically survive. If you never go to him or never see him, you're going to miss out on on the basics. That's just the bare basics of the game. And then there's other client orders from other characters that teach you the more advanced stuff. That was one of my biggest problems with the game is that it just kind of drops you in the lobby after the tutorial. And it's like, hey, have at it. Everything's buried in menus. You don't know which menu to go to. The menus are terribly laid out. You don't, you don't have any direction. And then I wandered into some cafe... And I'm like, what the hell is this place? And then I had to find my way back to where I was supposed to be. And uh, yeah, yeah, this this game. Yeah, I ended up wandering into a casino and I'm like, what do I do in here? Do I actually <laughs> gamble in here or let me just leave? This is ridiculous yeah. in here. It's tough to find a balance with tutorials for me because either you do like Gears 5 where you cover every blessed movement for someone who's never played a video game before, like walk with your left stick, aim with your right, jump with A. I don't need all that, but I also, for something as complex as this, we could skip how to move around and, and, and actually tell me the things that are different about this game than every other game. So I get, I generally don't like tutorials. I don't want to have to sit through them, especially in an action game. I just want to go. But I hated the tutorial, even though it was short and sweet. As you said, I just wanted to get into slaying things. So I kind of breezed through it and found a mission. And uh, shortly into that mission, I gave up forever. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, the you know, I'm kind of the opposite with a game that is being ported from back in 2012 i feel like there should be a little bit more there should be a little bit of hey this is what we were doing back in the day here's what you need to do now and and that there was just none of that there was it was like hey remember these graphics from 2012 hey you get them now but now you don't know what the hell you're doing so yeah yeah, it is not a pretty game it (laughs) has well, I think the character models look pretty fine. MMOs in general aren't the most graphically intensive games in the world. Um, but this really... The character models look pretty good. The monsters actually didn't look too bad to me. But the environments look very barren. Uh, you know, flat textures of grass as opposed to actual grass and things like that. I will ask. Did everyone play it on Xbox or did anyone play it on PC? I played on Xbox One. Xbox as well here. The Xbox. Okay. Because there is that. I will say that is the biggest difference between Xbox and PC. It does. The game runs and looks a lot better on PC. I have it on both. Um, I mean, it's still 2012. I think for a 2012 game, it looks pretty good. Um, there are a few of the environments. Like I said, I've been playing on and off for eight years. Some environments, like the, the first one, the forest level, to me, looks great. Mm-hmm. But then there are other ones that. I mean, they're just bland. I mean, everything like where everything just looks beige, and the enemies are beige. It's like, uh, you guys could have done better there. But something like the forest level to me looks—it's it, a great way to introduce like the art direction. And it, to me, to me at least personally, it looks good. 
So you've been playing this game since 2008, you said? Uh, no, since 2012. Or 2012. Okay, so yeah. did you end up having like a uh, like a server side where you got a Japanese version of it? Is that what it was? Yeah, so um, some there is some fans that translated the game into English. Uh, so you can use something called the PSO2 Tweaker, and it, it's basically an unofficial English patch for the game. And so that's what I used uh, back then. Back then, it was super convoluted and complicated, but now, eight years later, if you want to patch the game to English, it's super easy. It pretty much does it for you. Okay. What were you about to say, Jeff? Oh, I was going to say, I mean, if you have a nostalgic feel for Fantasy Star, because I had played Fantasy Star online on the Vita. What, was it nice. Was it the Vita or the uh, or the PSP? I can't remember, but one of those two. I, I think it was Vita. And, it was PSP. and. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I remember like, oh, this is this is pretty cool. But and maybe it's because it has aged that it didn't immediately attract me. So what was the name of that MMO game we played, Scott, um, that we had that guest on for where you're like a cybernetic ninja? Oh, you're talking about um, uh, Warframe. 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 Like that felt like a modern game. And, and again, this is a port of an older game, but it for an action game, it felt like the action came first. And whereas I could definitely feel like I was playing an MMO with Fantasy Star Online because to me, like the action didn't feel visceral or tactile because, you know, games like World of Warcraft, you press a button and your character attacks for you. It's definitely more uh, action based than that, but it just didn't feel crunchy. Some of the spells look cool. Like the care, I can't remember what class I had, but I cast a spell and Laser shot everywhere and shot all the enemies and stuff. So it just didn't hook me, I guess, is what I'm trying to say from a gameplay perspective. I was going to say real quick, I mean, as you as you move on, you get a ton of crazy moves and a ton of awesome stuff. I mean, my character is a hunter, which is the very basic, like, melee character. uses mainly swords and stuff. I'm still unlocking moves, and I'm level 50 right mm-hmm. now. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, I found this game's more most interesting aspect in the time that I played was creating my character. There's a ton of options for me, how you how your mm-hmm. character's appearance looks. And I made mine look like some guy out of Yakuza, so <laughs> I feel I feel that was a win for me in that column. <laughs> yeah, they had some pretty in depth customization that you could do with your characters. I know I believe uh, Nomix said that he had tried to customize his and that actually glitched on him where it wouldn't let him pick certain attributes for his character. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I did see him say that uh, in the chat, and I was kind of surprised, but I, it's kind of weird, too. I mean, it's an eight-year-old game. It shouldn't have bugs like that. Well, yeah. I, I wonder if the uh, the setting that he tried to do, if it was probably something that was locked behind the paywall, but I'm not sure about that either. I don't think so, only because the... Uh, I mean, we'll get it when we get to the paywall portion, um, but um, usually the stuff you unlock... Or that's that's locked behind there. You won't even see the. You shouldn't see the option for it at least. Okay. Unless he somehow bugged that. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there. You know? I tell you what. I got I got trapped in a. Uh, I, well, I'm, I, I say trapped because of my novice abilities for with this game. But um, there was this. I tried to get into a group of people that were playing in some forest level, and then it kicked me out. And then I was trapped in their like group, but without the group. And I couldn't participate in any uh, any missions, and so I just had to run around and explore like the ship, I guess, uh, or the rest of the game. And uh, it just got to be so like the menus are so crazy, uh, and so I'm trying to figure out which menu like gets me out of this group that I'm in. And I ended up going back to like how my my character's appearance looked, and I'm like, how that how did I get here? And I couldn't get back to uh, just me being able to play. And so I had to restart the game, and that was really frustrating. But um, And that, no, I'd say that because that could be more me rather than the game. But I feel it was a blend of both. It's possible. Um, your, your group could have gone on to a level you haven't unlocked yet. So this is how the basics of the leveling when it comes to going to different worlds and stuff work. You have to go to, I can't remember her name, but she gives out all of the, the quests, Rebecca. basically. Rebecca, Rebecca, okay, yeah. So you go to her, and you have to do exploration quests first. Once you complete that world's exploration quest, then it unlocks all of these sub 
many, 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 many sub quests uh, that are related to that world. And there's something like. I can't remember the number, like 13 or 14 different worlds right now. There's an obnoxious amount of quests in this game, too. I learned that just by roaming around the uh, hub city. Well, I mm-hmm. would hope there would be. I don't I don't consider that obnoxious because it is an MMO. And essentially, they're supposed to be endlessly replayable. So that's the sort of thing I would expect to have side quest after side quest. Um, so that that part didn't bother me at all it is overwhelming though how many side quests there Mm -hmm. are in this game based on each world like just based on the forest world once you finish that exploration you will have uh just off the top of my head six or seven different apcs that all have their own set of quests for you to complete like if you go to the cafe she's gonna say hey i need this kind of meat from that world so you're gonna go and get meat uh someone's gonna say kill these kill 20 of these guys that's another person another person might say they might and when, as you look at each world there's all, usually some tutorial that teaches you not about the world itself but about the game so there's there's quests almost associated uh with each one of those and it keeps going and going and uh, there's uh crafting in the game so that, um once you unlock that world it, you learn about that world's materials and there's a quest to teach you about that world's materials so basically the gameplay is just hidden within a a whole bunch of quests yeah yeah and that's just that's how fantasy star online was as well the first one so it doesn't surprise me so for me it was just kind of like riding an old bike once once i learned who the npcs i needed to talk to to get stuff done once i figured it once i found them all um because there's, there's some in the main lobby, there's some in the shopping area, and then there's uh, one or two in the cafe. Okay, uh, so there's questing um, that I feel like important to kind of cover for any new players because it's kind of convoluted and hidden. Um, and I'm talking about like the main quests that re- are related to the actual lore of the game. So right now there's story quests, and they're... Have they have their own category? Episode one is the main game that released when the game originally released in Japan. The way it's set up now, you just watch the cutscenes basically, and you just watch cutscene after cutscene after cutscene after cutscene until you get to the end. And then episode two starts, which is the next expansion, and then episode three. Uh, the reason why it's set up that way, when the game originally came out, you did have to actually go on quests, but it was super convoluted and it was awful. And Sega said, we're just going to streamline episodes one through three. Four through six, the storytelling is a lot better, and it's great, but it's not out yet in here in America, so it's just a wait and kind of see kind of thing. Um, and then there's urgent quests. Urgent quests all happen. If they happen, it's going to happen at the top of the hour, and you'll get an alert when it happens. The great thing about urgent quests, unlike other MMOs, it doesn't matter your level. You can participate in them no matter what, and that's when you're going to get a ton of experience, uh, and also that's where you're going to get some of the best loot in the game as well, which is great. And that one can be done up to with up to 12 other players. Usually when I do it, it's with 12 random people, and we have a great time together. And then there are exclusive quests. The exclusive quests are done during specific times. So right now the event is wedding themed just because it's that time of the month. And so there's uh, its own set of quests that you, you can do as well. And I'm talk- when I say quests, I mean literal quests not client orders because those are separate and then there's missions that you can do as well and these missions there's main missions that teach you actually how to play the game and all the different systems then there's daily missions i think that's self-explanatory then there's weekly missions limited timed missions which have not unlocked yet in north america and then there's tiered missions the tiered missions are related to the battle pass stuff okay um how many classes were there i forgot to count them all there are six classes if i remember right there's races on top of that yes now do the races do they matter at all do you get any like buffs for specific races as opposed to other races in this game no races don't matter really as much so any race can be any class uh classes do matter and then there are subclasses which you can pick um and those matter as well depending on what your main class is and the great thing about this game is if you pick a class and you don't feel comfortable with it or you don't like it you can switch it at any time um just keep in mind you'll start back at level one but um yeah you can switch classes at any time interesting yeah i remember seeing that in one of the 
the quest that the, that you do, it tells you how to do it. But that was as far as I got with that. And if you guys have any questions, I, I do have, at least with the North America version, which is the same, but it's slightly different, but it's generally the same as the Japanese version. I have probably about over 100 hours in the North American version so far. And I have hundreds of hours in the Japanese version. So what would you say brings you, keeps bringing you back or draws you into Fantasy Star Online? What, what is it about this game that clicked with you that, you know, made you want to spend so much time with it? Part of it is uh, it's, it has this loop that I like. Um, it's the reason why I love games like Monster Hunter and Destiny, both 1 and 2 a lot as well. You just get this loop going that it's it, you're going to... If you don't like running the same missions over and over and over again, this is not the game for you because you're going to be doing that a lot. And it's just about getting loot and making your character look cool at, in the end. And to me, it's just this, uh, I don't know, it's just something about this and like the, the games like Diablo, you know, those kinds of games as well. Once you finish the game, you just want to keep going and going and going because I don't have that loot yet, that 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 in-game stuff that that you aspire to have, mm-hmm. you know, whether no matter what it is. Um, and there's just so much to do in this game. I just feel like that when you explore certain things, you just, it just kind of clicks with you, you know, and just seeing some of the creativity with the community as well. Uh, it's fantastic. Like just the other day, I saw someone, if you guys are last airbender fans, someone had a almost pretty much the perfect model of Azula. And it was just like, wow, that's incredible. And there's just so many different random events that happen too. I mean, me and a friend attended a concert the other day in the game that were, I mean, They were Japanese pop stars, but it's in the game. Interesting. It has all these things that I like, I love about when it comes to like MMOs and stuff, stuff that's missing when it comes to, even though I love Destiny, I feel like it's missing a lot. Uh, It's missing the mark on a a lot of things. Whereas Fantasy Star Online, it has this groove that, because the Fantasy Star uh, really was the originator with a lot of those types of games. Uh, Not Diablo, though, because Diablo predates that far beyond. But like Monster Hunter, it predates Monster Hunter, it predates Destiny. And you, they try to emulate some of the feeling that Fancy Star, like some of the systems that Fancy Star has, but doesn't do it quite right. I feel like Fancy Star does it, does it right. Hey, wall. So this is the one I had a, a hard time getting past. Is that these there's ads, and I'm not going to speak to everything that's in 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 the paywall, but these ads, uh, <laughs> they're crazy at times, just because they're they're like half the screen. Um, and I'm trying to like maneuver to where I can, my character to where he's not covered up by the, by the screen. It's funny at first, it's kind of comical and you're like, Oh, that's kind of funny. And then you notice that they're there all the time. And, uh, and that just drove me nuts. Uh, I'm, I, I can't speak to anything else other, other than that as regards to the paywall is that ads for whatever's coming up or, you know, whatever stuff you can buy it was just atrocious yeah there was uh two currencies that i saw um correct me if i'm wrong carrington oh i don't even remember what the two currencies were one was like this egg this triangle looking currency and then the other one was Mm -hmm. like a a jewel looking currency Mm -hmm. yeah you're right so yeah yeah and then there's one more that's uh called fun but that's like the free premium currency i don't know it's just kind of weird but yeah there's there is a third one okay i know i noticed the jewel one though i got to earn a little bit of that from doing some quest so that one is definitely earnable but the uh, triangle one was uh completely something that you pay for correct that is correct and that from what i saw it only unlocks uh cosmetic items is that correct as well kind of kind of okay yeah it's i I hate that it's kind of split up that like this but it is what it is so the triangle one, uh, that's the one that gets you like a lot of like the premium features. So if you wanted extra inventory space, if you wanted, if you want to set up a personal shop, because there are there is player shops in the game, uh, that's how you would get it. Uh, if you want, there are cosmetics hidden behind the triangle one as well. Is that how you um, also purchase more slots to hold more um, quests? Uh, I don't think so, because I think 40 is the quest limit. I don't think it can go any higher than that. Okay, because whenever I hit some quest limit and it said to get any more, I had to purchase more quest slots. Maybe it is. Oh, you know, scratch that. It is right. Yeah, because I think it's 20. I, I'm a premium user, so it's 40 You also me. only get so a, a limited number of get the game. So yeah, that uh, is health cool. revivals in in game, and then if you want to continue battling you have to purchase more 
or uh, restart the uh, the quest. So that's one aspect of the paywall. Yeah, that one's there too. Um, but if you're if you play with friends or in a party, there's a, an item called Moon Atomizer, which can res uh, your friends as well. Um, that's the what it's called Escape Doll. The Escape Doll is mainly for people that are playing by themselves because the game's trying to encourage to get with a group and play with friends and things like that. Mm. Yes, there's also a Battle Pass that's in the game as well. Yes, so there's the free one, like all other Battle Passes, and this feature is unique towards the North American version. The Japanese version does not have this at all. Uh, so for the free Battle Pass, you'll get uh, certain items at certain levels, and all of those items are generally boosts, like boosts for experience, boosts to get rare item drops, and all that stuff. And then the premium version, I don't remember how much it is. If you have, If you pay for premium, which is 15 bucks a month, you automatically get access to the gold. They call it gold. So you get uh, access to the gold portion. And the gold portion, that's where you're going to get all of the rare cosmetics for each season. Um, and this season, I have them all, which is the first time I completed a battle pass completely. Ooh. And uh, it was just... It, it takes time, but you can do it easily in about one or two weeks if you seriously try. And to get all of the stuff, no matter what, if it's free or premium, you have to do the tiered missions I mentioned earlier, or the daily missions or weekly missions. Tiered missions give you the most experience for the battle pass. Dailies and weeklies give you very few no, I, I did uh, read, experience uh, for that the battle pass. You, I guess you can purchase pets or like companions. Uh, is that is that correct or no? Kind of. <laughs> so there are pets in the game, but pets are very geared towards the summoner class only. Yeah, and that's what I played. Which I think is a fun... It's a very fun class to play. Um, so outside of that, there is something called a an auxiliary, which you can get for free. Um, if you want more, you will have to pay for them. Or if you want to change their look, you, you can... You have to pay for it. But auxiliaries are companions they can do quests for you um only fetch quests though or they can go on quests with you and be a companion with you and auxiliaries are completely customized by you so when you i can't remember what level you unlock an auxiliary yet but once you unlock an auxiliary um you get thrown into the character creation again so you that same deep character creation that was referenced earlier it's there available for the auxiliary which is kind of cool and kind of. I was nice. just gonna say that one thing I did read is that this game is very much playable from start to finish, without dumping a ton of money into, which is which is refreshing for an MMO. That's what gets me the most because the original Fantasy Star Online did have a subscription on top of it. So, I mean, if you played on GameCube, you could play it offline. But if you could play completely offline if you want to without paying the subscription, or you could pay the subscription to play on whatever. Uh, with this one, you don't have to pay anything if you don't want to, and yeah, it's it's glorious, and you can get some of the like themed cosmetics that you might get through an event, or just some of the rare cosmetics if you want. If you don't want to pay a dime, you can still unlock that stuff. It'll just take a little longer, like with any other free-to-play game. Replayability. Seeing as there is a ton of quests in this game, the re replayability factor on this is quite high. Is there... Any uh, mention online how many quests are currently available in Fantasy of Star Online 2? Not that I can find, but I think it's because when I do a search, it's for English only. And the English wikis, the English forums are still being built right now, even though the game has been out for the past eight years with an English translation available. Uh, a lot of the, I don't, even though I am part Japanese, I can't speak it while well, I'm learning. And I can't read it. I definitely can't read it right now. A lot of that stuff is in Japanese still, and Google Translate doesn't do a good job translating those pages for whatever reason. So, but there is um, a lot. There is a lot. There is there's a lot. Uh, so stay tuned for all that stuff to be available for you to look up. Um, there's a ton of YouTube videos that that will help it out, but there is no like guides or anything out there just yet yeah i feel i feel the uh the at least in english replayability <laughs> of this game or any game yeah. like this would be so much higher than than just a, a regular action rpg and that, 
and that's kind of by design. You know, you're kind of forced to to do new things uh, just simply because new things are being added all the time. Yeah, I mean, this game, despite it being eight years old, is still being updated today in Japan. Episode six is is scheduled to end in September of this year. Last I heard, I'm not sure with all the stuff that's going on in the world right now if that delayed it at any at all. But at this moment in time. September is supposed to be end of episode six, and it, that's been going on for the past like two years. It's kind of weird to kind of like talk about and review this game right now because there's still so much that we as North American players do not have access to. There are items, quests, urgent quests that I mentioned earlier, and random events like the the concert I mentioned. There's still a ton of that that's not available to us just yet, and the Sega hasn't said when it'll be available to us yet. But I mean, I. It's there, it's out there, and they said that it is coming. So there's three full expansions that have yet to be released in North America. Okay, and that's going to boost up the replayability factor even more. Mm. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Judgment. At the end of each of our episodes, we decide if a game decides deserves our seal, which is our general thumbs up or thumbs down, and needs a two-third vote to be approved. Uh, Jeff, what do you say? I'm going to rec- recuse myself um, to use a... Uh, a political term as I don't think I gave the game enough of a fair shot to say one way or another because it just was unappealing to me from the beginning but this sort of thing needs a lot of time so I'm, I'm gonna leave it up to you three all right Mark yeah so my problem with this game is that it, it while it's an eight-year-old game it feels like an eight-year-old game um, I, I you know like i have very little dabbling in the fantasy star online realm. And even back going eight, 10 years, it does. It just, it, it felt cumbersome to me. It felt, it felt like a chore to get anywhere. And, and that took away from the fun factor. Whereas you Carrington, I I haven't been playing this game a ton. And so for new players, I feel like this game is a complete turnoff. It's a, it's a game where you're like, ah, I don't know if I should play this because it's so there's so much stuff, it's so involved and it's so hard to get anywhere. While the action is great, the the gameplay and you know the battling system and the the weapons and everything, the loot drop that's all great. I just I don't I don't feel like I could give it my my thumbs up just simply because I'm a new player to it. And as me as a new player to, to fantasy star online, it, it was, it was a chore. It was a chore. Carrington, what do you say? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, if you're not a fan of running basically the same missions over and over again, or running a lot of the same quests over and over again, this game's probably not going to be for you. Uh, if you, Love basically collecting things. Uh, if looting is your thing and things like that, this game I would definitely highly recommend. I, I feel like, like I said, especially if you're a fan of games like Destiny, this game will scratch an itch for you that I, I think Destiny fails to do. And if you if you have any trouble, ask anyone in the community. Um, as far as like the game is concerned, I would highly recommend if you're on Xbox, hooking up a keyboard. Or if you're on PC, I mean, you already have a keyboard available to you. And ask questions and stuff, because people are more than willing to teach you about the game, which is nice. They're not going to make fun of you for it. Um, so it, it is going to get my, my seal of approval, but I might be a little biased. Nah, I that, mean, you've put in, in the that. most time in it, Just so it's understandable that you would be biased for it. My experience with MMOs, uh, I played Ragnarok Online back in the day and World of Warcraft. And the thing that this game does not do that those games did well was the low times and the the feel of the world for example world of warcraft was an open world game whereas this game is not every area that you go into you have to have a loading screen and it's it's kind of a long loading screen to be honest uh the gameplay didn't really appeal to me and the questing was just so obnoxious to even learn how to play the game that it turned me off at the the very beginning so this is not going to get my seal um which means that this game is not budget arcade approved we did have one listener commentary um jeff you want to take this 
I suppose. No, McWright C says, uh, I'll preface this by saying I don't play a ton, or I didn't play a ton, but uh, usually first impressions are important, and PSO2 gave me a mixed bag of them. I played on PC, and the default window is about the size of a small mouse pad, which wouldn't be bad if the text window were larger. I... <laughs> I couldn't find a way in the beginning of the game menus uh, to change the graphic settings, which is not a surprise because everything is buried in those menus. It's probably there, but like just trying to invert my vertical axis was its own chore. So I had to exit and restart doing it before the game launched. I am a full screen gamer. I play 440p on a 27 inch screen. Hell, humble brag. Uh, <laughs> the game allows uh, 1080p and less in windowed mode. However, in full screen, it doesn't allow you to set a resolution, which seems odd. It did allow frame rate limit uh, adjustment uh, through, which was nice. It finally, uh, I finally launched the game, chose the robot uh, race cast and preset eight and adjusted the look. Went to finalize my character and it thought my character was too small. The height of your undressed character has to be a hundred. <laughs> I didn't know this had to be above 150 centimeters. I maxed out the height. Still didn't work. Turns out you can't use preset A8 because of a bug. So I had to choose a different one and adjust it. I finished the prologue and upon entering the main ship, I had a disconnected from server error uh, on a normal congestion server. The actual gameplay is so bad. The graphics are a little dated, but fine. Some dialogue is horrendous. And he quotes, I am an observer. I can tell you that you need to go here, but I can't tell you why. I am just an observer. I am an observer. After all, I observe. Uh, I will argue that's good dialogue. Uh, it sounds like <laughs> comedy. Um, final verdict. I, uh, I'll keep it installed to give it a go. It's free and that price is reasonable. It's just very overwhelming. UI atrocious and sound music can cause eardrum damage. I'm not a doctor, but again, it's free. I know another free game, though, called Chess Rush, and P uh, PSO2 is no Chess Rush. <laughs> Classic Gnomic. That's great. That is fantastic. And I will say about the height thing, that's very specific to the North America version. Uh, in Japan, you can make your character very, very I've small never ran too. into a game where you can have a character that doesn't meet a height limitation. They should put that in <laughs> NBA games. Like, no. <laughs> Your character is too, too short. You'll never make it an NBA That'd be game hilarious. over screen. The, um, next week, or the next game we'll be playing is Grand Theft Auto 2. We're going back to old school roots because it is free to play. I yeah. hope it's um, aged well. You can uh, wow. download it at gta.com.ua. <laughs> Um, and it'll run just about on any PC, including Jeff's. Including mine. We do want to thank Carrington for coming on the show. Where can people find you, Carrington? Yeah, sure. So I'm part of Real Dudes Podcast, an indie gaming show where we talk about and review and go over the news for independent video games. Uh, you can visit us over at Real Dudes Podcast. And you there, you can find everything about the show, like where to find us and where to follow us, all that lovely stuff. Me specifically, you can find me on You guys have been doing Twitter, Real Dudes for quite some time now, too, right? Yes, sir. This is now our... What is this? 2020? Wow, nice. 2020. It's been four years since we Jeez, started the show. Nice. You've been running almost as long as PSO2. <laughs> All right. We want to thank everybody for joining us. Want to help the show? You can subscribe wherever you listen. We're on multiple platforms. Leave us a kind review wherever you listen. Like you can join me. our Patreon at patreon.com slash budgetarcade. You can purchase our t-shirts and other apparel at hotkeygaming.com slash budget hyphen arcade. And don't forget to use our promo code. Butt biscuits. And if you can't support the show financially, be sure to tell a friend about the show. Uh, you can send any hate mail to show at budgetarcade.com. Music is provided by Stimage, and you can download his music at metroidmetal.com. If you want to get in touch with Scott, you can call him at 352 Eight. I'm just kidding. Uh, you can reach us on our social media, Twitter and Instagram, at Budget Arcade, Facebook.com slash Budget Arcade, and of course our website, www.budgetarcade.com. Can we do a uh, can, can we do a, a song next week? You want a song? You know, I, I listen to all your songs, Jeff, and I feel like that's what's missing on this podcast. Well, you'll have to ask Scott. This is, this is his side of the podcast, so he's the captain of the ship. Well... 
I might have to make an executive decision and do. I mean, do some rap. Use ideas. It's one though. thing when I, some hip hop. It's one thing when I do the editing. I can throw whatever garbage I want in, and Scott's just going to be like, ah, "At least I didn't have to edit." But when he's editing, you know, it's actually to be honest, Scott's open to pretty much every idea I've pitched him. So uh, if I if I think of something that I want to do. Um, I'll do it and see if he's up for it. But All right. Everybody game on. I can't promise anything right now. Oh, God, we're out of here. Podcast Network. May is Maytag month at Lowe's. Save on our exclusive selection of Maytag appliances with collections found only at Lowe's. Get up to $200 via prepaid card by mail on your purchase of select Maytag major appliances, a brand you know and trust. Shop in store or at Lowe's.com. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Manufacturer's rebate. Prepaid card amount varies based on purchase. Offer valid through 6-2. Exclusions, terms, and restrictions apply. U.S. only.